Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to talk about how to graph and describe transformations. So we're going to look at four transformations here. Before we do that, let's talk about what is a transformation. It is simply a change in size, shape, position, or orientation of a graph. And so, like I said, we're going to see four transformations and the first one is going to be a translation. So a translation sounds very similar to transformation, but a translation is a specific transformation. It is a transformation that shifts so keyword here would be shift. Um, another thing you could think of is a slide. It shifts or slides a graph horizontally and or vertically, but it does not change its size, shape, or orientation. So we could shift or slide a graph left, right, that would be horizontally, or up and down, that would be vertically, okay? Next one is a reflection. A reflection is a transformation that flips a graph over a line called the line of reflection. So you could think about like looking into a mirror, right? You, you see the reflected image, kind of the same idea with a graph. So if we have a graph over here, or let's talk about my hand, if I were to reflect my hand over to the other side, it would look like this, right? And whatever I reflected over, that is considered my line of reflection. My vertical stretch would be a transformation that multiplies all of the y coordinates of a function by the same factor a, so the variable used for a stretch is a, um, and that's greater than one. So a vertical stretch is going to make our graph be steeper, or if we're talking about a parabola or an absolute value graph, it's gonna make it open more narrow, okay? And a vertical shrink is a transformation that multiplies all of the y coordinates of a function by the same factor a. So exact same definition as a vertical stretch, but the difference here now, what we're multiplying by is gonna be some fraction that's between zero and one. So like one half or one third, something like that. And it's gonna make our graph be um, less steep, or if we're talking about a parabola or an absolute value graph, it's gonna make it open wider. Okay, so we're gonna shrink it vertically. All right, so we're gonna look at four examples. We're gonna start with these first two. We're gonna graph a particular function that has been transformed. We're gonna graph its parent function, and we're gonna describe the transformation that has taken place. So for number one, we are going to look at uh, graphing g of x equals the absolute value of x plus three. So we already know this is an absolute value function because of how the equation is written with absolute value bars. So we're gonna graph the g of x function and its parent function and describe the transformation. So this plus three right here tells me that we are going to translate left three units. Okay, so now you're probably looking at that and going, well, plus three, to me, that seems like we should go right. Well, with horizontal translations, it is opposite of what it looks like because initially that was x minus h. h is the variable we use for horizontal translation. And so now if that's positive, that means we had to have plugged in for h a negative number. So it's x minus negative three, minus a negative becomes plus three. That's why we go to the left. All right, so our vertex now is gonna be right here at negative three, zero. And for an absolute value graph, we just go up one and right one, or um, up one and left one, right? So this would be our absolute value graph for, let's fix that a little bit, for our g of x function, okay? All right, so now if I switch up in pink, our parent function, would just be the absolute value of x. So that would be these points right here with the vertex being on the origin. So as you can see, all of our points were shifted three units to the left, okay? So there's our, when it says describe the transformation, what I've circled there in pink, that is our transformation. We translated three units to the left, okay? All right, let's look at number two. Number two says graph k of x equals negative x and its parent function to describe the transformation. So this is a linear function. So this is like y equals negative x. So this is simply just a straight line through our origin, but we have a negative slope, okay? So that would be our um, k of x function, k of x equals negative x. So our parent function is just y equals x which is the um, essentially like the reflection of what we have for our k of x function, all right? So this would be our parent function, this would be y equals x. And so the transformation that has taken place is a reflection. So we have reflected our graph, okay? All right, now for number three, graph r of x equals three x squared and its parent function and describe the transformation. So we see that x squared there, so that tells us this is a quadratic function. And the three here, we are now multiplying, so this is gonna be a vertical stretch or shrink, 
but since that value three is greater than one, this would be a vertical stretch. So we can go ahead and say that this is a vertical stretch, and we will say by a factor of three. And now here I'm gonna actually go ahead and plot the parent function parabola first so that we can see how this r of x function is being transformed. So if our, our parent function parabola, we have zero, zero, one, one, two, one, two, three, four, and we have negative one, one, and negative two, four. Okay, so let's see if my program will give me a parabola there, good. All right, see if I can get it to line up, and then we'll perform our stretch. All right, that looks pretty good right there. Okay, so now, remember for a vertical stretch or a shrink, we are multiplying our output values or our y values. So for this parabola, we have five points, and we're gonna vertically stretch all five of these However, our vertex is actually gonna stay in the same place because our vertex is at the origin, which means it has a y coordinate of zero. So zero times three is still zero, okay? But if we look at these two points right here, they have a y value of one. So now their new y value should be one times three, so three. So they're gonna move up to three. So those two points are gonna move to right there, okay? So our vertex is still at the origin. Now, these two points that have a y value of two, or excuse me, have an x value of negative two and two, their y value is four, because remember our parent function is just x squared, so negative two squared and two squared are both four. So now we're gonna multiply four by three, so they're gonna have a y value of 12. Okay, so we'll go ahead and move those. So right now they're at four, so five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, it's actually gonna be at the top of my graph here, and this one will be there. So these two points, moved up to here. So now our new parabola will look like this. Okay, didn't stick for me. Let me go ahead and try it one more time. Let's go one more, and then we'll just try and freehand it. All right, so anyway, let's take away these arrows here, kind of clear up our picture a little bit. So now our new parabola is looking like this. All right, not too bad. Okay, so now, notice how it is more narrow. Right? We, we vertically stretched our parent function to get what we have right there, okay? All right, so now for our last example, graph P of X equals one half times the absolute value of X and its parent function and describe the transformation. So we can go ahead and graph the parent function. We'll do that in pink. We did this a minute ago for example number one, and that would be our parent function for our absolute value. It just has a vertex at the origin, and we go up one right one or up one left one to form our parent function. So this one half right here is now going to be a vertical shrink by a factor of one half. So now when we graph the P of X function, these points are going to move down by a factor of one half. And what I mean by the points is I mean the Y values. So if we look at these two y values right here, they have a y value of one, so now they should have a y value of one half, so they're gonna move to there. These two points have a y value of two, so they're gonna move down to a y value of one. These two y values have a, or these two points have a y value of three, so now they're gonna move down to one and a half, okay? And so as we can see, our graph now is more, is wider, okay? So that would be our new absolute value graph right there. So what we have done is we have vertically shrunk the parent function absolute value by a factor of one half, right? And that is how you graph and describe transformations. <laughs>